members of parliament were seeking re-election into 2025, out of the December elections, the presidential and the parliamentary elections, uh, they will be wanting to be or touch base in their various constituencies to engage with their constituents so that they can still gather more to represent the constituency uh, when parliament resumes after the general serving, swearing in of the of the president and all the other parliamentary uh, duties mm. that should happen. So among the things to expect today, these two are on the table. There's however one major one, and it is about the conversations about the vacancy, as has been suggested by uh, the member of parliament, uh, the former minority leader. I'm talking about Karuna Idrisumati. Right. And um, so, have you spotted him around? And does he look enthous enthusiastic ahead of asking the speaker, or I mean, uh, triggering the uh, Article 97 that he intends to do? Well, Martin, we, we are yet to see uh, the member of parliament. Um, we are yet to see the former minority leader, Harun Idrisu, here. But just like you mentioned, it is one of the key expectations for today. The former uh, leader of parliament, uh, he has stated that his side of the house intends to invoke Article 97.1G of the constitution to compel colleagues from the majority side to vacate their seat as members of the house. Now, this is coming after uh, four MPs on the ticket of the of the NPP have declared their intention to seek re-election as independent candidates. And I'll read to you what Article 97.1 says. It says that a member of parliament shall vacate a seat if he leaves the party of which he mm. was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent candidate. Now okay. we know that um, former minister of state, there's also Cynthia Morrison, an MP4, uh, Gunnar West and two other members of parliament from the side right. of the majority, uh, they okay. will be seeking re-election on December 7 as independent candidates. And that is why this has been of topical interest and could be spoken yes. about here. Okay. Noble Crosby, and thank you very much. We certainly will be getting more from parliament, hopefully before the show ends or right after this bulletin, we have... Um, uh, News Central, which will definitely be going back to Parliament to get a sense of what's happening. But let's try and put the whole conversation in perspective and pick the thoughts of Sami Obeng, who is the Executive Director of the Parliamentary Network Africa. Now, he has joined us on the phone. Sami, a very good afternoon. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. To start with, <clears throat> how do you see this playing? I mean, for those who may not know, there's a possibility that the NPP majority could lose that majority hold on parliament if the former minority leader is able to trigger Article 97 like he intends to do. So, Sami, I mean, I'm sure you have been following. Help us understand what is likely to happen if that does happen. Well, if it does happen, we are certainly going to have an addition to the series of interesting happenings that this eighth parliament has produced since it was constituted in January of 2021. Um, if it does happen, yes, we're going to have for the very first time a situation where the majority ship in parliament will move to a political party that is not the party that runs the executive branch of government, which will be a novelty or a new thing so far as our, our country uh, is concerned. It's the processes leading up to it happening that is yet uh, to be seen. Now, whereas it may be for a very short period, if it does happen, uh, it will still be very significant, seeing that we are just a few weeks to election, uh, seeing that uh, politicians would certainly want to take uh, advantage of uh, any situation to, you know, get score some political points. And seeing that it has a way of breathing the the the, the I don't want to call it ego, but breathing the the ruling NPC going into the election and perhaps empowering the opposition and DC going into the election. So it's a very interesting dynamic. Uh, we look forward to how it will play out in Parliament today and in the coming days. Right. And, and Sami, I mean, the other commentators on this particular issue have said that 
because there is a precedent, it is likely to be the guiding principle. Do you get that sense that the speaker will be compelled by the fact that a former speaker, based on the same precedent, the, 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 the same argument, also asked a seat to be declared vacant? Would Al Bambagbin be compelled to toe that line, you think? Well, even with the precedent, uh, it is important to put in context because the circumstances surrounding the precedent situation is not, at least as of this morning, uh, the same circumstances surrounding the situation happening now. Now, um, your colleague read not long ago the provisions of Article 971G, mm. which it's quite clear. Now, I like to put 971G in two different parts. The first part is that the Constitution is saying you joined Parliament as a member of a particular political party. You are seeking to join another party because you have left the party in which you joined Parliament and for which reason you may have to uh, uh, lose your seat, or you join parliament as a member of a party and you are seeking to stay in parliament as an independent member of parliament. You know, in both instances, in my opinion, the first thing that must happen, which was a major factor or a key factor in the president that you have cited, is that the party in which these members of parliament. Uh, through which these members of parliament became MPs in the first place, should be declaring that these are no longer our members, right. which happened. In fact, which was the basis for which Speaker Okwe in, in November of 2020 went ahead to give that particular ruling. As to whether we would have those same circumstances, as to whether we would have the MPP writing to parliament to say, these two members of parliament are no longer our members, and to please deal with the matter. As to whether the NDC will also write to Parliament and say, this other member of Parliament is also no longer a member because he has filed, you know, so go ahead and take some decisions. It's left to be seen. So the president does not only play out uh, 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 because, you know, it's happened, it's, it's not a straightforward situation. Right. It will heavily depend on the processes. And I really do not think that a mere mention on the floor of Parliament or on a political party rally platform, or even on the floor of Parliament through whatever means um, the Honorable Aruna is seeking to put this across, will be enough to get the Speaker to say, okay, by the fact that you have mentioned that I'm going to apply the okay ruling uh, uh, to this. Right. Mr. Obing, thank you so much. Samuel Obing, Executive Director, Parliamentary Network Africa, thank you for your time on this issue. And certainly, like I indicated, our parliamentary correspondent, Noble Crosby, and will be updating us as to whether or not Haruna Idris will be triggering Article 97.1G if, um, you know, um, business of the House does commence. Okay, so what really is the dynamics that we are looking at here. We know that currently both sides of the uh, political divide in Parliament, the MPP and the NDC, have equal number of seats. However, there is one independent candidate who has decided to do business with the NPP, and that's the MP for Fomena. So if you look at these numbers, 275 members of Parliament, 137 for both sides, and then there's one independent candidate. That is the only reason why the NPP has majority in Parliament. Now, the twist in the tale is that if Harun Idrisu does activate or uh, ask the Speaker to declare those four seats vacant, it will mean that the NPP is likely to lose three of its seats. The NDC will lose one. That makes it four independent seats or four um, vacant seats. Now, because we are less than six months to an election, we cannot do a by-election. That's what the constitution, the constitution says, that if you are less than six months to an election, we cannot do a by-election. So if those four seats are declared vacant, meaning those MPs will be sacked from the House, the uh, NDC, by default, will become the majority. So it tells you that then they are likely to uh, dictate the pace of business in the House. Now, government has still a number of very important documents or uh, businesses that need to be transacted on the floor of Parliament. If the NDC is majority, 
there is the possibility they could frustrate government business on the floor. So we'll see what happens. In the first precedent, the MPP wrote to the speaker, then Michael Kwe, to trigger it. Now it looks like it might not be in their favor. We spoke to uh, a parliamentary affairs um, individual who's monitored activities of parliament for a long, long time, Dr. Rashid Draman, who posits that if the MPP attempts to do that, it will be political suicide. So they would not even dare draw the speaker's attention to the fact that three of their members are going independent. So we'll look at, uh, we'll try and uh, get further and better understanding of how all of these play out in the coming days, especially from today, uh, because we have a, a reporter in parliament to keep tabs on that for us.